Are you? Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, the Word of the Lord. Appreciate you watching, and hope you're ready for a study from God's Word tonight. We're going to be going over some things that I, I hope will help set the stage for our upcoming tent meeting. Fall tent meeting, September 19th through the 30th, 7 p.m., right next to the Eden Mall. You can see there's Belks over here to the uh, to the right of the tent, so it's right in the in the spot between uh, the mall and Highway 14. If you know where Builders Mart is, uh, we're right in the corner of uh, 14, and I think that's Cox Street that runs in front of Builders Mart down to the post office. Uh, and so I uh, hope you know where this is. is uh, I think it's a very uh, uh, central location, and we hope that you will make plans to come out and attend the fall tent meeting. Uh, the reason why I think this is going to be a good uh, tent meeting, uh, number one, we'll be preaching the gospel. That, that in of itself is enough said. But number two is because I think we have one of the, the uh, uh, finest uh, preachers under a tent that you will ever hear, named John Shannon. Now, if you've never heard John Shannon under a tent before, I know you've probably heard him. Uh, we've played him on our, uh, our television programs before. We've played some of his lessons. Uh, tent meetings and so forth, but you can see he uses a very, uh, I want to say, old-fashioned uh, way of presenting the gospel, the old sheet sermons. This is the way they did over time, they, before they had PowerPoint, before they had overhead projectors, uh, even before they had chalkboards. This is what they had. They used sheet, the bed sheet, and they put all the scriptures and all the points on the bed sheet. And friends, uh, Brother John's teachings, uh, I just don't think you can get much uh, plainer or simpler and easier to understand so why don't you come out and hear Brother John Shannon because I think you'll definitely uh, 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 want to come back to hear some more he's very uh, 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 easy to listen to uh, my my youngest daughter she says man he, he may preach for three hours but it seems like ten and we say you mean ten minutes she goes yeah that's what I mean ten minutes so, uh, but it does. It's just very, it goes by very fast. It's a very uh, 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 informative type of lesson. He makes it so simple that, uh, I mean, if you can see through a ladder, you can see uh, the lessons that he's giving. And so I really want you to encourage you to come out and hear the preaching uh, there at the mall. Uh, also, we have our TV times, and we're going to be giving you this on a regular basis so you can make plans to set your DVRs or whatever you're going to do. Uh, our, our, tent, our tent TV is what I call it, tent TV. Uh, we always have extra time going uh, during our, our tent meetings so that if you're not able to come out, at least you're going to be hearing some preaching, you're going to be hearing talking about the, the, uh, the tent. And we really want to see all of Eden come out uh, at least one night and hear the gospel. And in the past, we've usually had pretty good attendance from Eden uh, from the, this location. I know one night we had 22 uh, folks from the community in one night uh, where the tent is set up now so I hope that we can uh, do that or even better and uh, friends if you but if you uh, if you can't make it out then here's the schedule here's the lineup uh, we've got TV time on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday all, all two weeks of the tent meeting is uh, we're going to be on, on television right here WGSR 47.1 you can watch it online WGSR47.com and so uh, we want you to come out and hear it. We want you to, to uh, uh, get the DVDs, request the DVDs. And it's all because we love you enough to present this to you free of charge. Now, friends, let's just stop and think for a moment. We are the people, the Church of Christ. We're the people who never ask you for a dime. And as Mark talked about earlier, there's people all over begging you for a dollar. You know, they're, they're hollering for the dollar. And they want you to give, they want you to tithe, they want you to do all this. And they won't, they won't do anything like this for you. But we're taking the time, effort, the money, and putting up a tent, renting the spot, putting a tent up, and then buying airtime. This uh, equals 20 and a half hours of airtime, my, my uh, calculation is correct. Uh, some 20 hours of airtime uh, in order to... Uh, uh, present the gospel to you. We're, help, we're getting men to come in to do the TV program. Brother Kevin Pendergrass is going to be doing the TV the first week. 
uh, another fellow by the name of David Fanny is going to be doing the second week, uh, the finishing the first week, and uh, into the into the weekend. And I'm just saying that's just the kind of uh, of thing we're doing for you, friends, to help you to see this is how much we love you and to care about you. We're going to present the gospel to you, and so we're willing to to uh, 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 bear this expense and not ask you for a single thing, give it away. And uh, uh, we hope that you appreciate that enough to at least come out and see what we're, what we're, what we're saying. You know, if, if, uh, if a local store or the mall said we're giving away free, uh, uh, free gift certificates or a free shopping spree, you'd at least go out and see what they got. You know, you'd at least go out and find out what, what kind of selection are they giving away. What, what is it? There may be something I want. Well, why don't you come out to the tent? We're giving everything away. All of our DVDs, books, literature, anything, it's all free. We're not asking for a single dime. So why don't you come out? And so we hope that you'll do that very thing and, and uh, uh, study the Bible with us. Now, let me tell you why we're going to be talking about what we are talking about tonight. Friends, when we do things like our TV programs and when we put the tent up, we always advertise, we always advertise that we want you to invite your preacher out. We want you to bring your neighbors, your friends, your family, and so forth, but we want you to bring your pastor out too, your pastor, preacher, rabbi, bishop, whoever it may be. We want you to bring him out. And here's why, friends. It's because we believe that if the truth can be found, then it ought to be the case that the men of God are the ones who can present it the best. Now, friends, what I want you to see is we are the kind of individuals that sometimes are told that we're arrogant and we're conceited or we're pompous and called a whole lot of other bad words, I guess you might say. But the fact of the matter is, friends, we are simply assured of what we believe. Now let's just look at the Bible here. In Luke chapter 1 and verse uh, 1, here is what Paul, uh, Luke says. Luke is writing to his friend Theopolis. And this is pretty much going to be the, the theme of our, uh, our meeting there in, there in Eden. For as much as you have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, most certainly believed among us. Friends, this is what we're doing. We are setting forth to you the things that we most certainly believe. We are confident of them. We are certain, we are sure about these things. That's why we, that's why we say them. Paul said we believe Therefore we speak. And so we are going to set forth the things that we most surely believe in the tent meetings and our TV programs and really our, 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 our lessons on a regular basis during the week at our many places. They are just examples of things that we have most surely believe. And so what we're trying to get you to do is we want you to come out and examine to see why we are so confident that those things are true. Uh, look what, what Luke says. Luke says, the things that are most surely believed among us have been delivered. He said, it seemed good to me to write to you, Theopolis. And this is why. He wants Theopolis to know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Friends, we want you to know that we are so confident about the things that we teach that we'll present them to you so that you can have the same confidence. You can know for sure. Now, I know sometimes, I know sometimes people say, well, you know, they get a little mad, a little bit irritated, they get a little loud, a little boisterous, whatever, and I think it's because they're not certain. They're not sure about what they believe. And therefore, they don't want to speak it. They don't want to teach it. They don't want to present it to anybody. They don't want to discuss it with anybody. But friends, that's not the kind of people we are. We are the kind of people that are sure and we don't mind we don't mind uh, being questioned at our 10 meetings. We always have the microphone. You have the microphone for you to uh, uh, you to use or your pastor can use. You can ask a question uh, uh, of the preacher and we'll give you a Bible answer. <clears throat> so here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at us like the, uh, Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah 6, verses 10 through 12. In Nehemiah chapter 6, in verse 10 through 12. 
Nehemiah is they're rebuilding the walls, and he's got some enemies, Sanballat and Tobiah, and these guys are trying to get him to, to stop, and they're trying to undermine everything he's doing. But look what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah said, After, afterward I came unto the house of Shemaiah. Now Shemaiah is going to give uh, uh, Nehemiah some advice. Now Shemaiah was, was shut up. Here's what it was. He, was, he, was. he had the doors closed. He said, let us, this is what he tells Nehemiah, he says, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple for they, the enemies, will come to slay me Yea, in the night will they come to slay thee, or slay thee. They will come in the night to slay thee. Let's lock ourselves into the temple. Let's close the doors and shut ourselves up so they can't get to us. Now that's what his advice is. But here's what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah said, should such a man as I flee? Now friends, let me tell you something. There are some people in the community that would want us to hush. They'd want us to be quiet. They'd want us to shut ourselves up in the doors and not get the gospel out. And there are some folks who claim to be members of the Church of Christ that would say the same thing. There are some folks in this area that they won't come out and support a tent meeting. They won't come out and support the television program. They think that what we're doing is too is bad. It's too loud. It's too boisterous. We're stirring people up. We're, we're making people uncomfortable. But the problem is we're making them look bad. We are actually showing that we love souls more than some of these so-called members of the Lord's church. There's folks down in Greensboro. I know Greensboro picking us up now in some places. And there's some churches down there. They, don't, they want to distance themselves from us. That's fine. That's fine. Because all that tells me is you are not wanting to do what God said. They would be like Shemaiah. They would tell us, let's go into the house, let's shut the doors, and let's keep the word behind the walls. But no, we're the kind of people who want to get things out beyond the walls. You think they're going to get mad in Martinsville for me saying that? The Church of Christ is the true beyond the walls network. We're the people who want to get the gospel out beyond the walls. The Pentecostals, the Apostolics, the Baptists, the Methodists, and even some of our brethren, they're the ones that want to hide behind the wall. And so here's what Nehemiah says. Nehemiah said, Should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. He said, you know what? If my enemies want to, want to come after me, they're going to have to come after me. He said, they're not going to find me closed down in, in some little spider hole like Saddam Hussein was. He said, I'm going to be right here. I'm not afraid of them. Now, friends, I want you to stop and consider. The reason why people say that we're bold or cocky or whatever they want to say about it is really because we're confident that what we're teaching is the truth. Now, friends, that's just all there is to it. We are confident that what we're teaching is the truth, and therefore we believe, therefore we speak. And so we want you to have the same confidence that what we're saying is the truth. Now here's why we're so confident about it, friends. It's because of this very this, this principle here. In John chapter 10 and verse 30, we'll say 33, look at the context here. The Jews wanted to kill Jesus. And they said, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said ye are gods? If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemous because I said I am the Son of God. He says, look, if God in the scriptures said that ye are gods to whom he gave the word of God, well, isn't it the case that the one that the Father has sanctified and the one that the Father sent into the world should be able to say that he is 
the Son of God too? See, he's making an argument from the lesser to the greater. If you are called sons of God because God gave you the word, then surely I can call myself the Son of God because God sent me into the world and sanctified me. So he says, look, the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, it is not a contradiction. It is not violate the scriptures for me to say this about myself since the scripture says it about you too. Now, friends, here's my point. We are have confidence because we know the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, when we say something, when we teach something from the Bible, we have confidence that it's not going to come over here and bite us in another scripture. No, our scriptures are going to be in harmony. We don't have to worry about someone coming up and saying, oh, but it's written again, and it contradicts what you just said here. See, that's why people who teach doctrines, just for example, that you are, uh, uh, let's say that there's a, a certain number that are elected to go to heaven and a certain number that are elected to go to hell, they don't want that doctrine scrutinized. They want you to accept it at face value. But here's what happens when it's scrutinized. If it is the case that everybody's elected and predestined to go someplace, one way or the other, then why are you out there preaching? Why do you have to preach if everybody's going to go to heaven or hell and it's already determined? Yeah. You see, your argument, your argument falls. In other words, your doctrine is weak. And so we don't have to worry about that because we're confident that the scripture cannot be broken. So what we teach about salvation and what we teach about the church and what we teach about uh, uh, worship that, that's not going to hurt us. That's not going to hurt us. Because we're confident that the scripture is going to be in harmony with everything that we teach. Now, you can call that whatever you want to. Cocky, pompous, whatever. Friends, I just call it the truth. In Acts 4 and verse 13, notice this. Acts 4 and verse 13, here is what they said about Peter and John. When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, friends, I, I may be an ignorant and unlearned fella, and I know there's a lot, a lot of people that have uh, more education and higher degrees, and they got letters after their name that I can't even uh, recall. But I know this, friends, that the doctrine that we teach is true because it is harmonious. It does not contradict itself somewhere else. And the fact that I'm so confident in it, that's why people may say one, some bad things about us, but that's what gives us our boldness. That's why we can come on and say, here's what the Bible says, and that's why we're not afraid to read it. You know, we have people on here all the time. Call or call in. And I can play the video clip of, of the man who said, let's see if I can find it right here. The man who would not talk on the phone, he would not read 1 Peter because uh, he didn't believe what it said. And he just simply said, uh, let's see. He said, that's, I, uh, he said that, that's, I don't believe that's your interpretation. When all that they were asking was him to read the verse, Let's see if I can find that for us right quick. Uh, so, friends, it's, not, it's really not about, about us. It's about the truth. And we're confident that when we tell you this is what the Bible says, then it's not going to come around and, and hurt us uh, on, the, uh, on the backside. It's not going to come around and, and hurt us in the end. Just listen to this, this caller. Yeah, you, you, you just said there's only one Savior, but you, then you say we're saved through water baptism. So you're actually saying there's two Saviors. So we didn't say baptism only. But we didn't say Jesus only. Okay. We're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. 
and uh, let, let the Holy Spirit through Peter tell us what baptism does. All right. Well, let me ask you one more question. Wait, wait, wait. Now, let's don't move from this. The life figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. What does baptism do according to Peter? But it says not to put in the way a fifth. What does baptism do according to Peter? What does baptism do according to Peter, sir? According to what you say, it I didn't write this. Sir. I didn't write that passage. Two different times. What, 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 does, what does it do? No. What, what did Peter say that baptism does? No. I'm not going to argue with that, though. Well, you can't argue with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Now, you see here, friends, the man won't answer the question because he knows that it is going to shoot his doctrine right in the foot. He's not going to read 1 Peter 3 21 because he doesn't want to hear baptism doth also now save us. Now, friends, all I'm saying is the reason why we have confidence is because we know that the doctrine that we're teaching is not going to be broken. It's, not, it's, going, to, it's going to be harmonious. And that's why we're so confident. That's why we're so bold with it. That's why we can say, uh, bring your preacher out and uh, let's let him scrutinize you know what we're talking about. We are not going to flee and hide because we have the truth. We have the truth. And we're inviting you to come out and investigate us. Friends, let me tell you. There's a reason why. There's a reason why preachers flee. There's a reason why they fear. There's a reason why they run like a dog chasing after them. Like they stole a pie and a dog chased that. That's what, there's a reason why they run that way. It's because they have something to fear. You know, I heard, I heard a Baptist preacher say to me just a few months ago that the reason why we are treated the way we are is because those preachers are afraid. And they don't have the Bible knowledge to answer what we say. Now, you know what? I would love, I would love for that Baptist preacher who said that to me, I would love for him to say it on the air. You know why? Because that's the truth. There's a reason why they're afraid. You say, well, they're not afraid of y'all. They're not afraid. Oh, yes, they are. Look at this. You don't think they're afraid? Why do you think, why do you think uh, guys like this, why do you think people do uh, things like this. Let me see. This is uh, Benny Ward from Eden. I know you've seen these videos before. And I know the, the, the audio is kind of hard on this one. Now I ask you for a Bible study. I asked him for a Bible study. He said, no, sir. The word. Do that. Well, I said Bible study, though. I know what you said. Thank you. And he said, all y'all do is argue the word. Well, that was the end of it. And later on, he told our brethren, he said that we wouldn't give him the time to answer. You know what, Mr. Benny Wood? We have been offering you the chance to come on and answer what we say and give a defense of your doctrine Anytime you want to come on. Anytime you want to come on. You just come on. Right here it is. This, this spot right here is just for you. Benny Wood. I need, a, I need to cut out of Benny Wood. And I say, here's Benny Wood's spot right here. You can stand right here and you can give a defense of Baptist doctrine. And we'll let you, we'll let you have the time. We'll divide our time up equally. And as, as we've always said, we'll divide the time. And usually y'all get... Y'all get the better end of the stick. So don't say that we won't give you time. Don't say that we won't give you time. Here is uh, here is another preacher. Why, do, why does he talk this way? Thank y'all for backing up the meeting. What can I do for you, sir? Mr. Joe, I don't believe that you were very clear on the premise. I personally just wanted to explain 
interviews. I'm not going to answer your question about what you must do to be saved, but bless your heart, you just going down the road. Hope you make it home all right, because if you die, you're going to be lost, because I'm not going to tell you what to do to be saved. Now, why don't the man answer the question about what to do to be saved? Does he not have enough confidence in what he believes to tell someone, well, get on your knees and say the sinner's prayer? Now, why wouldn't he say that? Why wouldn't he give a defense of that, friends? I'll tell you why. He's afraid. He's afraid. He has something to run from. He has, he's running from his own ignorance of the Bible. Oh, somebody's going to get mad now. You shouldn't call him ignorant. Well, friends, if he's not ignorant, then he's sure not letting us know any different because he's not telling us anything. Ask a question and he won't, give, he won't be given an answer. He won't uh, uh, give an answer, ask a question, he won't give an answer. Why is that? Why is it that people are, are, are so afraid of this? Is that, you know what I'm saying? What, what do they have to be afraid of? Uh, let's see here. Uh, those are kind of big, Mark. Aren't they? How, how big are they? Shouldn't take very long. All right, you have to send these two again then. Uh, let, let me just, let me just sh show you this, friends. Here's something that you need to consider. When we talk to people, we're not afraid to sit down with your preacher. We're not afraid to sit down with your pastor. And that's why on these tent meetings, friends, we invite you to come out and bring your preacher. Bring your pastor. You know, we came to Madison. Uh, when we set the tent up in Mayadan, there was some, uh, I think it was a lady, brought her preacher. Brought her preacher. And before she could say, this is my preacher, at the end of the service, before she could say, my preacher, he done, he'd gone to the car. He didn't want anybody to know he's a preacher. You know what the Bible would say? The Bible would say this, right here. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Friends, there's a reason why people are scared. There's a reason why people are afraid. It's because they don't have the truth. They're running because they are fearful. Now, why is it, friends, that they won't sit down and talk to us? We'll sit down and talk to them. We'll sit down and talk to you with them. You don't believe that? Look at this. Here is a, a discussion that I was having uh, on Facebook. Some of our, uh, I, I, this uh, fellow and I, we have some mutual friends, and I hope he doesn't mind me using his name. I didn't think about blocking it off, but Brandon Hughes, or Brandon Hodges, Brandon Hodges, he said the church of Christ is not the way to go. Someone asked a question. Which church should I go to? The church of Christ is not the way to go. Heaven is not where church of Christ people are going. Okay? Now, he's made that statement. Will, will, he, will he back it up with scripture? I don't see any scripture. So this is what Mr. Hodges said previously. He said, when you're looking for a church to go to, he said, try Osborne, Osborne Baptist. That's where... He and his wife and girlfriend go. Me and Ruth. That's, that's where we go. Try Osborne. You'll like it. So Osborne Baptist is where he goes. Osborne Baptist is where he goes. And this is where I guess he's learning that heaven is not where Church of Christ people are going. And I guess that's where he's learning Church of Christ is not the way to go. But this is what I asked Mr. Brandon. I said, right here, I said, my friend... Why don't we sit down and examine the church that you read about in the Bible and compare it to the Osborne Baptist Church? Now, that's all I want to do, friends. I just want to examine the, the church you're in and the church that you read about in the Bible. Let's, just open, let's open the pattern up. 
Let's look at it. And, and let's just see if it's identical. Because this is like a description. You know, when the police put out a, a description of the suspect or they put out a description of, of missing persons, you can, you, you can find out who that person is just by looking at the description. If the missing person, if the missing person is a, 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 a young girl that's got blonde hair and she's, five, and she's five foot and she's wearing a red sweater, if you see a person that's six foot tall, red hair, and wearing a green sweater, you know that's not her. She doesn't fit the description. So if I look at the church in the Bible and I see what that church did, what it looked like, how it was described, how, what it teaches, what it practices, I can tell whether it's the same church or not. I'm just asking, will you sit down and let's have this discussion? Let's sit down and discussion. Well, look, this is what he says. He said, I will get with you and I will bring a pastor, a real man of God, now that's great. I want you to bring a man of God. Because I know what the Bible says about a man of God. The Bible says this about a man of God. It says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished in all good works. The man of God is someone who knows the scripture and can handle it aright. He can write and divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. He can write and divide it, and he can use it for doctrine, for his teachings. He can use it for reproof. He can use it for correction. And he can use it for instruction in righteousness. He's going to be perfectly Perfect and thoroughly first. Everything he needs. The man of God knows how to use this book. So Brandon, if you want to sit down with me and your pastor, a real man of God, I welcome it. And so I'm assuming that you are talking about, that you are talking about when you said a, a real man of God, I'm assuming that you're talking about either Steve Griffin or his father Dewey. Now either one of those, I'd be glad to sit down and talk to him. I'd be, I'd be glad to sit down and talk to him. Now, he's going to get back with me. So anybody out there who goes to the Osborne Baptist Church, you might want to get with Brandon. And you may want to call Steve or call Dewey and just see if they will sit down and have a discussion and let's see if the church we read about in the Bible looks like the Osborne Baptist. Now, I've read the Bible through. I've done quite a bit of studying in the New Testament. And you know what? I know one thing. There's no, there's no praise band rock and roll concert going on in the New Testament worship. I know that. I know that. No smoke machines, you know. They don't pass the plate on Wednesday night. Steve, Steve said, oh yeah, it, we pass play it every time. Yeah, anytime's a good time to give. Well, if you're not doing what the Lord said, yeah. Church in the New Testament? It doesn't worship on Saturday night. But I don't know what Baptist Church does. Because that's, you know, that's what they decided they needed to do. Well, that's not what the Lord's church did. See? So, we can sit down and look at it. I'd be glad to look at it with you. I'd be glad to look at it with you. All right, thank you. I, uh, put on here, do you have something from Paul Grover? I, I want that one for sure, please. Now, you see, when he sat down, I'm sorry, I should have told you that earlier. Uh, when, when he do that, is Brandon going to bring one of his pastors? Who is it going to be? I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. But it's out here now. It's on the World Wide Web. Right here it is. It's on Facebook. And now we're putting it out here for everybody to see. Folks up in Michigan, you know, y'all may call, check on see if Osborne Baptist, a pastor from the Osborne Baptist Church, has come and had a Bible study with us. Or better yet, just bring them out to the tent. 
Bring him out, bring one of them out to the tent or both of them out to the tent. However you want to do it. Go ahead and put the phone lines up if you will, uh, Scotty. <clears throat> That's what we're looking for. We're looking for someone who will sit down and have a discussion with us. But see, they won't do it, friends. They won't do it. Listen to what the community says. Now, you know, I know that the preachers, they want to believe that they are something else. They want to believe that they're high in the, in the sight of, uh, 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 of the people. Well, you know what? The people see them for what they are. People see them for what they are. Scotty, can you put the Michigan number up too? Please? <clears throat> uh, listen to what these guys say. Do you think this would be beneficial to hear uh, dialogue, say, between some preachers and uh, on this thing different? It's not going to happen. You think it's not going to happen? You're not going to have any preachers around here, prominent preachers around here that's going to come in there and debate you because you are accurate, you know what you're talking about, you can base it on the words of the Bible. A lot of the preachers around here are country, just country preachers, not to knock at anybody at all. It's just they go by what they've been taught all their lives, which is incorrect. Now, my friends, why is it that a caller, I don't know who that guy was, but why is it when he say that the preachers are not going to do it because they're just country, they don't know what they're talking about? I'll tell you why he says that, because he knows that these guys aren't educated in the Bible.